Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkazonki, and this is my 99 range guide. I'm going to be showing you monsters that you want to be killing from when you first start out at level 1 range all the way till 99. It'll take a long time and it'll be a lot of grinding, but at the end it is worth it because range is quite useful at some areas um, and some bosses. And I think that it's a pretty fun skill to train and it doesn't take too long. So before we get into the training methods, I'm going to start out with showing you guys what kind of gear you're going to want to need. Um, and want to use all the way from level 1 to level 99. So first of all we move into the gear for ranging. Uh, for the low level gear you want to start out with your basic level leather armor at level 1 and then move on to your hard leather at level 10. Um, again I put all the bows here as well. I would recommend just to stick with bows because bows and arrows are the easiest to purchase off the Grand Exchange. Crossbows and bolts can sometimes be a lot harder to purchase. So you just start with your regular bow, then your oak bow, then your willow bow, then your maple bow, and then your yew bow. Um, and with arrows, always use the best arrows you can, so that would be at level 1 bronze, level 10 iron, steel, mithril, adamant, and on and up. Um, just remember that if you if you are using abilities, uh, the ammunition will not go down very fast. You will hardly use any ammunition, so really don't worry about the price of arrows at all. Even if you're using expensive arrows like rune, you won't actually be losing very many of them at all. So the price is a little bit uh, not that important. And then here's the page for higher level gear. Um, level 50 blue dehyde, level 60 black dehyde, and that is a red salamander, which is the best weapon to use at level 60 range. Trust me on this. Um, level 70 royal dehyde. I realize that royal dehyde is a level 65 defense requirement to wear, but I just decided to put it for level 70 because that's also the level 70 where you unlock the black salamander, which is the best weapon to use at level 70 range. So use those salamanders. Um, and level 80, I put armadillo. Again, armadillo is a level 70 requirement. However, um, if you're only level 70 range, it's not very likely that you'll be able to afford that. And then, of course, the Royal Crossbow along with that. You can also use the Chaotic Crossbows or the Zerite Bow, but the Royal Crossbow is the easiest to obtain and the cheapest. Moving on into the training methods, and I will show you where all these monsters are located um, in video clips after I explain a little bit, so just keep that in mind. There are also no XP per hour rates because the XP per hour varies so much between levels and what gear you end up using. So if you decide to, um, I don't know, use a lower level type of gear or not spend as much on arrows, your XP rates are going to be very different. However, at the lower levels, the XP per hour is not all that important since you'll be going through these levels so fast. Um, you'll easily be able to get up from all the way from level 1 to level 40 in about an hour or two, so it won't like, take you hardly any time. I'd recommend just to start out with cows and chickens and lumbridge, move on to spell wisps uh, or dark wizards, whichever one is your preference. Spell wisps are a little bit easier to kill, dark wizards have a little bit better drops. Um, and then level 30 plus, if you want to train your slayer a bit, banshees and pyrofiends are also very, very good XP um, at low levels, but you do have to have a slayer level for them. 15 for banshees, 30 for pyrofiends. Okay, and this is how you access all of the lower level range training places. First of all is the cows and the chickens, which are just in the Lumbridge, so you can just run from the Lumbridge Lodestone exactly where I show you. Um, the chickens are a little bit faster to kill, so they might be best to start out on in level 1 ranging. Um, but once you start one-hitting the chickens, move on to the cows because, uh, again, they have slightly higher HP and also give a little more XP. And after you're done with those, you can just run straight north of the cows and the chickens or teleport to the Varrock Lodestone. That will put you right by the Dark Wizards, um, which I would recommend to kill them here. There's other places to kill them, but this way, that, that is the place with the most spawns. Um, and then Spell Wisps are at the Wizard's Tower in the northeastern area, and there's not a whole lot of them. Again, I kill them all out, uh, so I have to wait for them to spawn, but if you are a lower level, uh, you will not kill them that quickly. And then uh, the next is the Banshees and the Slayer Tower. Just make sure you wear a either a Slayer Helmet. If you have one, you probably don't at this low of a level. Um, but if you don't have a Slayer Helmet, just wear earmuffs. You can buy them from any Slayer Master, and that will make sure that the Banshees don't drain your stats and kill you uh, miserably because they will do that if you don't wear your muffs and it's quite annoying. Uh, so banshees are quite good and then the last one I'm showing you here for the lower leveled areas is pyrofiends and this is in the relic of slayer caves. Uh, you can just run north of Caramelot or use the fairy ring or teleport there with the slayer ring. Any of those options work pretty well. Um, it's also pretty close to the Fremnic Province lodestone if you're interested in that. I believe you need the Fremnic Trials quest to access that lodestone. But anyway, uh, you just kill these. These are the highest level of all the low-level creatures with quite a bit of HP. And for your medium-level train at level 40, uh, I have Catabal Ponds, 
and green dragons. Um, in the video, I will show you green dragons in the ancient cavern. However, I'd recommend to go into the wilderness to kill them. I just didn't want to go into the wilderness with my kid at crossbows. Um, and catawba ponds are also uh, very low level, very easy to kill, kind of campable. Green dragons are more just if you want money. Level 50 is lesser demons uh, or mighty banshees. You do have to complete the quest smoking kills to kill mighty banshees, and they are. Um, the best XP rate out of all six of these monsters here, so they are very, very good XP, but you do need a quest to unlock them. Level 60 is Black Demons uh, and Aberrant Spectres. You need 60 Slayer to kill Aberrant Spectres, but they are very good herb droppers, so if you want to make a little bit of money. Also, Black Demons, if you want to take the time to bank the Ashes, they're about a mil plus profit per hour. Um, and also, pretty good XP, pretty good Crimson Charms as well, so they're always a good option. And now it's time to show you guys all of the mid-level area trading spots. So this one is in the Stronghold of Security. If you don't know how to get there, because um, I didn't really show the route there because it would just be a very long recording, and I'm trying to keep this video shorter, uh, but it is just south of Edgeville in the Barbarian Village. You go down the only hole in the village, the dungeon entrance, basically. It's by the mining spot right in the center of the village. And you just go through a couple uh, layers down through the trapdoors and all until you get to the greenish looking area and that's where the catabal ponds are if i didn't pronounce that right i don't care um and next is the green dragons i'm showing you guys brutal green dragons because i figured everyone knows where the regular green dragons are and if you want a green dragon that's better xp and better money than regular green dragons you can try these they are in the ancient cavern they are harder to kill than uh regular green dragons so i wouldn't really recommend these if you're only 40 range but if you're like 50 or 60 range and you want to try out a monster that's pretty decent money you can bank all the dr green dragon hide with signs of porters and bank the dragon bones and they're pretty good money they're you know about 1.5 mil an hour or so um next is the lesser demons and this place was like the place to be back in free to play uh before the evolution of combat i remember camping here this is how i trained my magic to like 55 um just using fireball on these things but now they're weak to range so you want to range them but anyway um this is the best place to kill them. I guess if you're free to play, you could also uh, follow a guide up to this point. Everything except for the green dragons and the banshees and the pyrophines has been free to play. Um, but anyway, here's the mighty banshees. Again, you need the smoking kills quest, so just make sure that you have that completed before you try to come down here. They are in the city of Paulden of Nietzsche. You just go down the well. If you have done the quest, you know how to get here. Um, and you, yeah, they are very, very good XP considering how fast they are to kill. Um, quite fast XP per hour. So these are one of my favorite spots. Um, next is the Black Demons. How you go here is just from the Taverly Lodestone, you run straight south. And if you don't have at least 70 agility, you're going to have to run all the way around to the dungeon. I'm sorry, it takes a long time, but that's just kind of how what you got to do if you don't have 70 agility. Uh, if you have 70, you can go through the pipe. If you have level 80 agility or above, like I do, you can go jump over that low floor like I did in the video. Um, but the pipe isn't too much farther of a run. It's not that big of a deal if you don't have 80. Um, as long as you have 70. But anyway, uh, here are the black demons. There are quite a few people in this world, but that's not normally the case, so don't worry. Um, next is the aberrant specters, which are in the Slayer Tower. Um, you can also kill these in the same dungeon that you killed the mighty banshees in, uh, if you chose to go that method. However, the ones in the Slayer Tower have more health and therefore give more XP per kill, so I would recommend to kill these. The Slayer Tower can get quite crowded, though, um, so just keep that in mind, but the ones in the uh, Paul of Niche Well Dungeon just have less H HP, so they're not as good. And now moving on to high-level training. At level 70, we have Water Fiends and Mature Grout Worms. Water Fiends are the best way to train range in the entire game, XP per hour-wise, and just overall efficiency-wise, because you get so many crimson charms from them as well so if you can force yourself to um, grind out 99 range at water fiends uh, that is the best way to do it you'll be rewarded the most by doing this i personally went from 94 to 99 range at water fiends um, all in one go uh, just whenever i logged on rs i killed water fiends and it wasn't too bad and i got a ton of crimsons from it and it was great and mature grot worms, of course, they're not as good XP from water fiends as water fiends, and also the drops aren't as good. Um, they do drop some rune stuff, but if just if you want some variety, I guess you can kill them. They're still pretty good XP. Um, more level 70 avian seas are also decent XP. They're comparable to grot worms XP per hour wise, and they drop a lot of adamant bars. They're about a mil profit per hour from all the noted adamant bars. Um, Aquanites, if you have 78 slayer, are also very good XP, um, about 250k range an hour. And uh, low 80, you have black dragons, which are very, very good money, about um, 2 mil profit per hour if you use signs of porters to bank their hides, or dark beasts if you have 90 slayer, which are uh, the second best XP per hour of all the range methods I have men mentioned. 
So if you just have them as a slayer task, or if you want a little variety and you have 90 slayer, you can kill dark beasts because they are also very good range XP. And now it's time for what you have all been waiting for, I believe, um, the higher level range training guides. So first of all, these are the best monsters to trade on in all of RuneScape. And if you're wondering what I'm eating, that is cooked sweet corn. It's like the cheapest food in the game for how much it heals. So um, if you just need a couple of food to heal up, it's a very good thing to buy. And I you know, like using sweet corn just because it saves a little money. But anyway, water fiends are the best in the game for range training, in my opinion, just because you get so many charms there, you can make some decent money there. It's about a mil an hour profit-wise. Um, and the XP is just very, very good. It's so efficient because you train your summoning and your range at the same time. But if you don't want water fiends, I do have some alternatives for you. Uh, just do water fiends. But we do have grot worms here. Um, again, bring a bone crusher and a demon horn necklace here if you have soul split, and you ha will have unlimited free healing because they do drop big bones. Um, so you can just soul split infinitely there. Uh, the next is the avian seas, which are in the god wars dungeon. These are pretty good money. Again, uh, about a million hour or so, so they're about the same profit as water fiends and not as good XP, and they don't drop charms, so they're not as good as water fiends. But I guess if you just want something different, you can definitely come and kill avian seas. The drops here are the noted adamant bar. They drop four adamant bars at a time, noted, and it's about a one in four drop rate. So uh, they are quite good money if you end up picking a lot of those up. And I did a bit of range training myself at avian seas before the evolution of combat, and I kind of liked it there. And the next one here is Aquanites. Not as many people know about this as a really good range training method, but it is a very good range training method. Um... Of course, you do have to have 78 Slayer to kill them. This is another one of those monsters that drops big bones, so just make sure to bring your Bone Crusher and Demon Horn Necklace if you have Soul Split unlocked. And again, unlimited free healing. Um, so the Aquanites, they are a bit annoying to get to if you don't have a high agility level. You need 81 agility to go through those shortcuts that I showed in the video, and if you don't have that, you can just run all the way around. It doesn't take too much longer. But yeah, you can just pretty much camp there forever if you have a Bone Crusher and Demon Horn Necklace, and it's pretty good XP. Uh, the next one is Black Dragons. They are decent XP. Uh, they're not as good as the rest of these methods that I'm showing you, but they are much better money um, because they are about 2 mil an hour if you use porters uh, because they're not too far away from the bank either. You can just teleport to a bank and then teleport right back with the fairy ring. Very quick banking, and uh, of course the bones and the highs are both worth quite a bit of money right now. So the Evil Chicken Lair, you do need a uh, recipe for Zadat. Disaster partially completed to access it, and if you don't have that completed, then don't even worry about bl killing black dragons at all, because there's no really other good places to kill them in the RS world. And the final one I'm showing you here is Dark Beast, and I did have the uh, Temple of Light teleport on my crystal unlocked. If you haven't completed the Within the Light quest, you won't have that, um, so don't worry about it. You have to have done the Morning's End quest to get down here, so if you've done that, you know how to get down here. And here we have some AFK, but kind of expensive alternatives. Um, at level 70, there's the Abyss Creatures. The good thing about these are they are very AFK, so you don't have to pay attention to the screen. Not as good XP as Water Fiends, and not as good Charms as Water Fiends, but if you don't want to pay attention, they can be a good option. And level 70 plus as well, um, Dagonos, you can cannon them. These are quite expensive, but at the same time, you get very, very good Crimson Charms. Um, and the XP is pretty good as well. I will have guides for these linked down in the description. Uh, the guides are not made yet. They will be made soon. So if you're watching this video right after it came out, the guides will not be there yet. But um, these two monsters are just too in-depth to explain in one video. So I'm going to be making separate guides for them. So just look down in the description for links on guides to how to kill these things. And some money-making alternatives and also gain a bit of range XP. Um, I would recommend 80 plus for Rorarius. And you also need 81 Slay for them. Uh, these can be AFK. Uh, you can also kill them uh, with abilities for faster money and faster XP per hour. They're only about 100k range XP per hour, so they're not very good XP, um, but you can make a fair amount of money from them, and they are quite easy to bank and to get to, and the requirements aren't too hard. And also at level 90 plus range, uh, Solo Armadillo, this does have quite a few requirements. You need good gear and overloads and turmoil and stuff like that. Um, but if you have all that stuff, Armadillo is very, very good at range XP per hour. It's about 300k range XP per hour, not including the time it takes to get kill count and bank and all that. Um, but I do have a guide for Solo Armadillo in the description, and again, a Rorarius guide is coming soon. So look out for that, but the Armadillo guide is already made. It is relevant, and uh, go kill Armadillo if you want to try out a little bit of PVM and not feel like you're wasting your time because it is also very, very good range XP per hour. And hey, if you get lucky, you can make quite a bit of money there as well.
So that's going to be all for my range guide. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, join my friends chat in-game at Melkozunki. See you guys next guide. Farewell.